the Magnum and Country Flame product line will burn a variety of fuels through the auger systems that we have in each appliance. What we'll do in this segment is go through each type of auger system. We're going to talk a little bit about the fuel, how it affects the augers, and how the condition of the auger system itself can affect the operation of the unit. To begin with, let's talk about what causes an auger system not to feed fuel. The first thing that we'll go over is the quality of the fuel. If the quality of the fuel is not up to a premium quality, what you'll find out is the fuel will get caught in the auger flightings, and as a result, the fuel will expand, it will pack into the auger system, and the fuel will just spin around and around in the auger flighting and will not come out the end of the drop tube and down into the firebox chamber. What if your fire goes out inconsistently? The fire will burn for an hour or two, it may even burn for a day or two, and then you come home and the fire's out and there's no fuel in the fire pot. What probably has happened there is something has gotten lodged in the auger system and caused the fuel to stop feeding for a predetermined amount of time and then the safety system shut the unit down, the unit went into a shutdown mode, and then possibly whatever was, dis was lodged into the auger system now broke loose and during the purging cycle the fuel is exiting the unit and when you look into the fire pot, there's no fire in there, there's very little fuel, but there's just a little bit of fuel in the bottom of the fire pot. Here again, this is an indication that something jammed up the auger, the unit went into a shutdown cycle, and then it freed itself, and then the fuel started coming back out again, but the safety system kept the unit shut down. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at a couple of the auger systems and we'll take a little bit closer look in how they operate and what can happen. The first thing we'll take a look at is the auger system for the Magnum Baby Countryside and the Winchester. They both use the same type of auger system and this is a cutaway portion here of what you would see if you were looking into the back of the unit. You have this aluminum housing, there's a hopper that goes on top of this so you're not really able to see this whole housing and then the fuel is fed down into the base of the auger system. Then the auger motor goes ahead and turns at intermittent speeds to get the fuel going through the system. Now if something gets lodged inside of this auger, what will happen is the auger motor will run up against this stop over here and then it stops. If the fuel does not dislodge itself, or if the fuel cannot be cut off by the action of the flighting, what will happen is the auger will sit there up against the stop and after a while the motor heats up and the thermal protectors that are built into this motor will shut the motor off so that it doesn't harm the system and doesn't jam everything up so tight that you can't get it apart. Also built into the control center are what's called amp limiters and those amp limiters when this motor gets really hot, it will shut the control board down into a shutdown mode and it will do the same thing. That way it protects the motor and protects the auger system. So let's say that you've got something jammed in here. How are you going to get it loose? The first thing that you want to remember is you don't grab a hold and put a pliers or a vice grip onto the flighting and try to move it backwards. Two things can happen. One, is you'll damage the flighting on the auger system itself and then it won't work after that or two you could break the gears in the gear case. One point that you want to remember is a gear motor is not designed to be forced backwards. So what you want to do is gently work the motor back and forth because there's a small amount of area in there that you can move this motor back and forth and that typically will dislodge anything that's caught inside of the auger system. If that doesn't work, then what you do is you take your Allen wrench and being careful to hold on to the, the auger motor so it doesn't fall out of the back of the unit because as this is sitting in here, it's facing downward like this here. You go ahead and you loosen this and you take the motor gently off and you set that down and then what you do is just leave your wrench right in the collar 
and move the auger back and forth. You may even have to turn it all the way around and turn the auger backwards like this so that it pushes the fuel back down the auger system and dislodges whatever is caught. If you've gotten something in the auger that has jammed it so tight that you're not able to get it out doing this, then you're not going to have any choice but to take the bolts loose that are located on either side of the auger system, remove this plate off of the back, and then you'll be able to slide the entire auger flighting out the back of the unit and dislodge any fuel. Now, remember, before taking the plate off, vacuum all the fuel out of the hopper system so that the only fuel that's going to be in the auger will be what's left inside the tube. When you have the system apart and you've dislodged what's, what's caught in there, make sure to check the flighting to make sure there were no nicks and, and the flighting didn't get bent. If it got bent, then you're going to want to go ahead and take a file or emery cloth and smoothen that off good and then reassemble the auger system. Now, this is a very typical auger system that fits in either the baby countryside or the Winchester.